The human body is this perfectly balanced machine, right? Well, not when I'm using it. Normally, all its parts work seamlessly together to keep us thriving and, well, alive. Each of our organs is essential for our day-to-day activities, from breathing, walking, talking, and coming up with bright ideas that push humanity forward. But are they really essential? Do we really need all those body parts? Or are some of them just ancient relics that we just got stuck with in this weird game of evolution? Take wisdom teeth, for example. Nah, somebody already (laughs) took mine. Yeah, there are those pairs of teeth stuck in the back of your mouth you often have to go to the dentist for. They're also known as third molars, and while they can be used to chew food, a lot of people think they're just unnecessary. And get this, around 22% of people worldwide don't even have all four of them. When they do grow in, they're the most likely to become impacted, which means they get stuck in the jawbone sideways and can't properly come through the gums. It's all because our jaws are often too small to accommodate these extra guys. Some smart scientists think that's because we've evolved to have smaller jaws over time. Recent evidence also shows that what we eat as kids might also be to blame, but it's hard to know for sure. Apparently, munching on hard-to-chew foods like raw veggies and nuts can actually stimulate jaw growth, while eating soft processed foods can kind of stunt it. And that leaves little space for our back teeth to come in and, you know, do their thing. Will they disappear altogether in the future? I guess we human mammals will just have to wait and see. Now let's talk about the vomeral nasal organ, or as I like to call it, the nose's secret instrument. You see, rodents and other mammals have this awesome ability to communicate with each other using chemical signals called pheromones. And guess what? They have a special organ called the vomeral nasal organ, or VNO, that helps them detect these pheromones. Here's where it gets interesting. While most adult humans have something resembling a VNO in their nose, it turns out that it's basically a useless remnant. Neuroscientists even say that if you look at the anatomy of this organ, you won't see any cells that resemble those of similar organs from other mammals. Also, this organ in humans doesn't seem to be communicating with the brain either. Now, it's not all bad news. Even though the human VNO is pretty useless, it looks like it still might respond to some pheromones. Will humans keep this organ on their evolutionary to-do list? For now, I'd place it in the maybe pile. Now, here's a tale. Animals that feature tails need these structures for a lot of things. Some need it for balance, others for navigation, while some need it to attract potential partners. But did you know that when we're just a few weeks old in our mother's belly, we actually have tails too? That's right, we have a whole little tail complete with vertebrae. As we develop, that tail magically disappears, and we're left with our trusty tailbone. Humans and apes are unique in that we don't have tails, unlike other primates. It's a mystery why apes lost their tails, but we can all agree that it makes us stand out in a crowd. However, once in a blue moon, a human is born with a little vestigial tail. Cute, right? Well, don't get too excited, because these tails don't have vertebrae and can sometimes be associated with a tricky condition of the spine. Either way, these tails are usually harmless and can be easily removed with a quick surgery. And let's be honest. It's not like we're going to miss it. After all, who needs a tail when you have arms and legs to get around? Plus, can you imagine trying to find pants that fit with a tail sticking out the back? Not a good look. There's little to no chance humans will end up needing tails in the future, so I'm guessing the tailbones are bye-bye in future generations. Humans also have a funny little fold of membrane in the inner corner of the eyes, called the plica semilunaris. It's basically what's left of a third eyelid, which is still found in some animals, like gorillas and other primates. But here's the funny thing. (laughs) Even our close relatives, the chimpanzees, have this little fold that appears to be useless too. So we're not alone in this eye quirkiness. Speaking of unusual membranes, they serve a variety of functions in different animals, such as protecting the eye from dirt and moisture, or hiding the iris from predators. Some species can even see through their transparent membranes when they're underwater or underground. 
Now, the reasons why we humans lost our third eyelid is still a bit of a mystery. Maybe changes in our habitat and eye physiology made it unnecessary. Or maybe we just evolved to be too cool for a third eyelid. Who knows? With or without vestigial organs, it's interesting to imagine what humans might look like in the future. Many organs have become obsolete because of our lifestyle changes. Care to have a peek into what we might look like in the future? And in the same vein, or artery, have you heard of the concept of text claw? It's where you spend so much time typing on your phone or laptop that your hand starts to cramp up like a claw. And that's just one of the physical changes that could happen to us if we don't take care of our bodies in this tech-heavy world. But it's not just our hands that are affected. We could end up with 90-degree elbows from constantly holding our devices at that angle, and even a smaller brain from all the distractions and information overload. Now I know what you're thinking, we just can't give up technology and go back to the Stone Age. And you're right, we don't have to. But we do need to be aware of the potential negative effects and take steps to reduce their damage. That's why a team of designers put their creative efforts together to present Mindy, a future human whose body has physically changed due to the constant and never-ending use of smartphones, laptops, and other types of maniacal devices. While Mindy's exaggerated changes may not be in our future, the concerns behind them are real. So what can we do? Well, one suggestion is to take regular breaks from our screens and stretch our legs a little. Maybe even encourage some office yoga or dance parties to get the blood flowing. We don't have to give up technology completely, but we do need to be mindful of its effects on our bodies and minds. Many years in the future, we might even get smaller in size. One scientist reckons that if we were smaller, our bodies would need less energy, which would come in super handy in our increasingly crowded planet. It's funny to think about how different our lives are now compared to when we were hunter-gatherers. Back then, we only had to interact with a handful of people each day. But now, remembering people's names is a super important trait, and it might even be something we grow to become better at. Or technology might actually play a role in our evolution. Scientists believe that we could one day have implants in our brains that help us remember people's names. It's like having a biological phone book directly in your body. Wouldn't that be cool? Eh, who knows? Maybe in the future, we'll even have visible technology as part of our appearance. Imagine having an artificial eye that can see different colors and visuals. And don't even get me started on what we might look like if we colonize Mars. With the lower gravity, our bodies could change in all sorts of ways. We might have longer arms and legs, or even insulating body hair like our Neanderthal ancestors. It's hard to pinpoint what we might look like in the future without very precise data to back the models up. But it's fair to say these changes will be interesting, to say the least. As for me, well, it's too late to say the least. I've said over 1,400 words here already. So, check this out. There are people who can bend down their pinky without bending the ring finger. But most find it hard or even impossible to do. When they move their middle or little finger, they tend to slightly bend their ring finger too. Yep, me too. Globe luxation is an extremely rare condition when people can make their eyes protrude out of their sockets. Unfortunately, this ability comes with downsides. It can cause numerous eye issues. Some indigenous groups of people, like Tibetans, can survive at altitudes as high as Mount Everest. This rare ability most likely appeared after years of evolution. The ancestors of modern Tibetans lived in high regions for thousands of years and developed red blood cell adaptations, making it possible to survive with dangerously low levels of oxygen. The Baju are sea nomads living in Southeast Asia. These people have evolved an extra-large spleen, serving as a repository of oxygen-rich blood cells. Thanks to that, they can easily spend 5 to 10 minutes fishing underwater without coming up for air even once. Now, about 14% of the population don't have a palmaris longus muscle. Oh, it's actually a rudimentary part of the body, and the need for it disappeared in the process of evolution. So, if you don't have this muscle, worry not. Its absence doesn't affect the work of your forearm anyway. About 5 to 37% of people don't have wisdom teeth from birth. 
these teeth are not really needed anymore. They were important for our ancestors since they helped to chew hard food like nuts, roots, and meat. And saltwater taffy. Nah, I made that up. But since most of the food we eat today is processed, wisdom teeth are now a mere atavism. Most people have just one clockwise hair whirl, but 5 out of 100 people have a double crown. And if both whirls are directed counterclockwise, this makes a person even more unique. Some scientists think there's a genetic link between hair whirl direction and handedness. A bit more than 8% of right-handed people have counterclockwise hair whirls. But in the left-handed, this number grows up to 45%. A man's brain gets older faster than a woman's. As men age, they start complaining about memory problems and lack of concentration more and more often. At the same time, women don't have such acute problems with memory, but they feel depressed more often. Hmm, which one would you choose? Now, when someone is lying, their own nose gives them away. Psychologists from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes goes up. This phenomenon got the name of, wait for it, the Pinocchio effect. Japanese people have particular bacteria in their intestines. These bacteria help them to digest sushi. The Japanese have been eating raw seaweed for centuries. Microorganisms dwelling on the surface of the seaweed got into their bodies and actively developed. Nowadays, the bacteria help Japanese people digest raw food and prevent different problems connected with food. So, people have as many hairs on their bodies as chimpanzees. The hair count of a person and a chimp is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is mostly useless and so fine that it's almost impossible to see. Humans don't have more genes than other species. In fact, people have fewer genes than a worm. Tomatoes also have many more genes than you do. But we are such complicated creatures. Well, recently, scientists have concluded that the number of genes that a genome contains isn't closely connected with the complexity of a living being. Let's take a breather. (laughs) Speaking of which, your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller since it has to make room for your heart. Your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, which are tiny balloon-shaped air sacs in your lungs. People have five most obvious senses – vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But that's not all. How about thermoception, the sense of heat? Or nociception, the perception of pain? Or your body awareness, proprioception? To figure out what it is, close your eyes and touch your nose. Got it? That's proprioception in action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. So your fingers get all wrinkly after you spend too much time in the water. Pruny fingers are caused by the narrowing of your blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area. And this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists think this process helps us have a better grip when our hands and feet are wet. There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with tetrachromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare and is much more common in women than in men. Interestingly, most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Now, not all people have round pupils. Two people out of every 10,000 have unusually shaped pupils. Most commonly, they resemble keyholes. This eye disorder is called colobaba. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. Only 3-22% to of people in the world have Morton's toe. It's a foot structure where the second toe is longer than the first one. Michelangelo's David and the Statue of Liberty both have this unusual body feature. Hey, toes up! In some people, saliva accumulates in a gland under their tongue. It can then get propelled out in a stream when a person presses on this gland. 
If the mouth is open at the moment, a jet can reach several feet. This process, called gleeking, can occur spontaneously. A person accidentally pushes their tongue against the gland while eating, yawning, talking, or cleaning their teeth, and voila! Up to 35% of people can gleek, but just 1% can do it on command. I had a friend in college who did that. Yeah, it was weird. About 18-35% to of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon has its own name, the photic sneeze <laughs> reflex. In the Greek language, it's called sun sneezing. Achoo! Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's the rubber-like stuff around your joints. Recently, scientists have discovered that cartilage might be able to repair itself, most effectively at the ankle, not that well in the knee, and least effectively in the hip. The human brain is 73% water, just like your heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start feeling exhausted. This also makes your memory get worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a damper on your mood. So drink up! Your brain is constantly processing tons of visual information, around 600 million bits per minute. It all starts when the light goes through the cornea, your eye's clear protective outer layer. Then the light turns into electrical signals. They travel to your brain, and it interprets them into the images you see. It takes milliseconds for this complicated process to happen. People who live to be 110 years and older, called supercentenarians, may have a secret. Researchers have discovered that their immune cells, called T-helpers, might change and adapt to the late stages of aging. These cells are likely to protect them from viruses and other health problems. We've become impressive multitaskers thanks to technology. Or rather, it only seems so. The human brain can't concentrate on two things at once. What it can do is to switch between several tasks really fast. But it makes your attention span shorter and harms your short-term memory and the ability to learn. So put that phone down. <laughs> Unlike our primate pals, many people still have these foot arches. They help us move. This arch is like a built-in shock absorber for your feet. It's what allows us to bounce. There's another one. It's called the transverse arch, running side to side on the top of your foot. Think of it like a bridge that helps keep your foot in shape. Research says this arch is a big deal, too. It's responsible for about 40% of your foot's stiffness. Simply put, it's like the scaffolding that holds your foot together. When scientists snipped the transverse arch, the foot lost a lot of its firmness. But when they cut the bottom arch, it wasn't that dramatic. So, is it a modern human thing? Nope. These arches didn't just pop up yesterday. The transverse arch has been around for 3 million years. The bottom arch showed up about 1.8 million years ago. We might as well continue with another element of our feet before moving up to other parts. Our pinky toes are also more important than they seem. Whether you were born without one or have lost it, you can still walk. But pinky ones are important for keeping us on our feet. They provide balance. Inside your foot, you've got 26 bones that team up to make sure you don't topple over. Small toe is a part of this balance work. Our ape ancestors needed their toes to grab, claw, and swing from trees. Today, we've traded our tree climbing skills for comfy couches and binge watches. Okay, let's move up a bit and talk about the appendix. You might think that it's useless, but nope. When a human is in their mommy's belly, this organ starts to do its job. Around the 11th week of development, it starts churning out special cells that produce helpful hormones and compounds. The appendix helps train our immune system's troops, ensuring they're top-notch defenders. It also collects all sorts of foreign substances, aka antigens, from our digestive tract. Yet, as diets evolved, this piece shrank like a deflating balloon. Unlike most other vestigial structures, the appendix isn't always harmless. It can turn into an angry little fireball. By the way, vestigial organs are the ones that have lost their primary ancestral function. These structures mostly lack an apparent purpose. Another famous vestigial example is wisdom teeth. Those are pointless and have been causing us trouble for ages. 
yet nearly 95% of us have them, and 90% might even have to deal with the drama of an impacted wisdom tooth at some point. If you don't have them, you might consider yourself lucky. Here's an additional interesting fact about wisdom teeth. Even though your teeth have a mineral softer than what's in shark teeth, new tests show that they're just as resilient. The coating on shark teeth is actually similar in hardness to the enamel on a human wisdom tooth. It's because their surfaces are made of mineral crystals held together by proteins. These prevent them from shattering easily upon impact. So the difference in how we and sharks use our teeth comes down to their design, not their toughness. Anthropologists have examined ancient skeletons. They think our ancestors needed these extra teeth to chew tough stuff, like roots and raw meat. Back then, those extra teeth came in handy. But then, we discovered cooking, and suddenly, our food got softer, and our jaws got smaller. Geneticists have their own take on this subject. It involves a gene called MYH16, which seems to play a role in both brain size and jaw characteristics. Yet, the exact part it played in our evolutionary story is still a bit of a mystery. Now, another pointless thing is the eyelid. Well, not the regular eyelid. You know, that little pink thing hiding in the corner of your eye. Birds and some other furry pals use it to fend off dust and debris trying to mess with their eyes. But in us humans, it's mostly vestigial. Meet the Palmaris longus. About 85% of us still carry it around. Maybe you also have it. You can test it by putting your hand on a flat surface and making your pinky and thumb meet. If you spot a little tendon band doing the limbo in the middle of your wrist, then you've found it. It was there for gripping stuff and swinging around like Tarzan. We can carry on with the grasping trick. Even before you're born, around 16 weeks into your time inside your mom's tummy, you're already practicing your grip. You start by grabbing onto the umbilical cord. When you finally arrive in the world, this reflex helps you hold onto things. Fun fact, small monkeys can hang on one hand for ages, thanks to a similar trick. Yet, we humans lose this super grip when we're around three months old. When you're still in your mother's womb, you also have a mini tail. But as you grow, it disappears, and those tiny vertebrae become your tailbone or coccyx. Humans and our ape cousins don't have tails like other animals. Our ears, too, have vestigial muscles. They help animals hear better and express their feelings. But in humans, these ear muscles don't do much. We figured out other ways to listen and show our emotions. Yet some of us can still wiggle our ears with practice. Surprisingly, toenails also count as a vestigial thing. I mean, they function as the initial line of defense. They protect the body against harmful microorganisms. In our evolutionary journey, we used our fingernails and toenails for defense, digging, and climbing. In the modern world, fingernails still come to our rescue, whether it's for peeling fruit or that sweet sensation of scratching an itch. Yet, toenails have retired, but hey, we can apply nail polish to them. For fashion's sake, they certainly work for many people. It's not just humans who have useless limbs or organs. In 1798, an anatomist examined a peculiar bird incapable of flying. He documented his observations. This avian species was none other than an ostrich. Ostriches and cassowaries are just a few examples of birds possessing vestigial wings. Anatomically speaking, these are rudimentary wings, incapable of granting flight to these hefty creatures. Yet, they aren't entirely devoid of function. They serve the purpose of maintaining balance during rapid running. Plus, they elaborate courtship displays, helping birds attract potential mates. Now, when it comes to animals, a lot of them glow, too. Around 76% of ocean animals, including jellyfish, worms, sharks, and sea stars, are bioluminescent. They have a compound called luciferin that reacts with oxygen to create light. And for them, it serves such purposes as stunning predators, attracting prey, or warning others of danger. We humans can glow too. Unfortunately, this glow is super faint. Our eyes can't see it. 
Our bodies emit light, but it's about a thousand times dimmer than what our eyes can detect. Scientists found that our glow changes throughout the day. It's the faintest in the morning and the brightest in the late afternoon. Our faces glow more than the rest of our bodies. They think it's because our faces get more sun exposure and have melanin, which has components that can boost light production. Some body tricks distinguish us from the rest of the animal kingdom. For instance, do you know that humans are the only animals capable of blushing? It seems we've got the exclusive rights to this rosy-cheeked phenomenon. When we find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, our blood vessels dilate. That's what gives us those blushes. Embarrassment is a pretty complex emotion. It's all about understanding what others think of us. This might be too advanced for other animals. Interestingly, bald uakari monkeys can also blush, but not in the same sense. For them, this is a show of their good health. Speaking of good health, we should honor our gut. Your gut includes the stomach, liver, and more. It's often called the second brain. This second brain has its own nervous system. It has a hundred million messengers. They send info to the rest of your body. Even if the gut-brain connection is cut, it keeps working. It ensures your digestive system functions on its own. You know what? In 10 years from now, you will be a completely different person. Well, at least your skeleton will be. To reach its adult size, your skeleton went through a process called modeling, which means the development of growth and formation. Turns out it regenerates completely once every 10 years or so. This entire process ensures you always have healthy bone cells, which can support you and provide calcium to your body. And speaking of ways the body regenerates, every second you make 25 million new cells. I'll do the math for you. Okay, that means in about 15 seconds, you'll have made more cells than there are people in the United States. Think about that the next time you feel you haven't been productive enough. Some animals have eyes that need to adapt to hot climates like camels, for example. Their eyes feature a third eyelid, but these sweep across from the corner of each eye. Because their environment is filled with small particles, they need to clean their eyes more frequently than other species. Now, see that little pink thing in the corner of your eye? It's also a third eyelid. Well, a vestige at least. In humans, the third eyelid is unnecessary because it no longer serves its original purpose. Next time you're tuning into your favorite song, try to pay some attention to your heartbeat. If you listen closely, you'll notice that sometimes your heartbeat may synchronize with the rhythm of the song. Now, not all genres of music have this special ability, but some tunes trigger the release of dopamine or the happy hormone. This effect may give you a lower heart rate, breathing rate, and blood pressure. And speaking of that healthy ticker of yours, just in case you're wondering, it beats on average about 75 times per minute. This means each year, a human heart can pump enough blood to fill an Olympic-sized pool, if that were a thing. What's even more fascinating is that if you were to connect all your blood vessels end-to-end, -end, it would be able to circle the Earth two and a half times. But that's not good for your own health, so don't do that. Your heart can also continue to beat even if it's removed from the body. That's because it has its own internal battery, which allows it to beat as long as it receives oxygen. If you regularly have your nails done at a salon, you've probably noticed you need more appointments for your fingers than your toes. That's because fingernails do grow faster. The definitive scientific answer is still up for debate, but many specialists think it's because fingernails used to be claws, somewhere back in our ancient history. These days, they're flatter and have widened a bit, and it all happened when primates started using tools in their day-to-day -day lives, like stones and branches. So there was less use for claws. Once they got flatter, it meant nails wouldn't have gotten in the way if primates wanted to use the palms of their hands. As for why fingernails grow faster than toenails, the short answer may be the fact that we use our hands more than your feet. As such, our fingernails are more exposed, and we may have evolved to grow them faster. The more you use a certain part of your body, the more it becomes exposed to damage. 
So for me, I'm in danger of my mouth falling off. Oh boy. Getting back to our hands, it's about time we give a nice shout-out to our humble pinkies. We don't see them as being really that important, since we don't use them for holding objects, eating, or writing. But recent studies have shown that losing the pinky on our dominant hands would have a devastating effect. Specialists haven't gathered enough data to supply specific numbers, but from what they've learned so far, losing our pinky would weaken our grip strength considerably, even if it's the lesser-used finger. Adding the ring finger to that and the effect would be worse for our grip strength. Another recent study done in the UK has shown that only about 40% of people are happy with how their nose looks. Regardless of how you feel about it, the human nose is a real-life superhero. That's because it acts as a heater, filter, and humidifier all at once. Inside each nostril, there are small, shelf-like bones that feature blood vessels. They heat the air up before it reaches other parts of our respiratory system. The mucus that's inside there handles making the air more humid. As for the filtering part, that's why we have nose hairs. Small particles get stuck on these small hairs, which helps prevent pollen, spores, viruses, or bacteria from reaching our lungs. Now, when watching cartoons, we're led to believe that the sound our heart makes is because it's touching its environment while beating. Well, it turns out that sound is actually made by the opening and closing of the heart valves. They're like small doors inside our hearts that open and close to pump blood correctly from one side of the heart to the other. For our bodies to work, blood needs to move at the right time and in the right direction, or else. Now, let's talk teeth. Throughout your entire life, you'll probably spend up to 40 days total just brushing your teeth. And in case you're still wondering, teeth are not in fact bones, even though they do have a lot in common. One of the primary differences between bones and teeth is that our bones can regenerate. They are living tissue. Our teeth are not, and they remain permanently damaged once broken. Now here's another shocker. Ooh, we are the only species on this planet to have a chin. There's still some debate about this subject in the scientific community, but one of the reasons why seems to be to make our jaws stronger. As humans have continued to evolve, their teeth and the muscles in their jaws got smaller and smaller. So they needed something to help with increased jaw resistance. Now, most of us have developed some specific traits depending on the area of the globe in which we live. But there is a group of people, specifically those who live in higher altitudes, that develop some pretty cool traits. That's because high-altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted so well that they actually thrive. In the Andes Mountains of South America, People have evolved red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system much more efficient. People living in Tibet have to endure similar conditions, but surprisingly, they have adapted differently. In Tibet, they can take more breaths so that they can properly oxygenate their bodies. You've probably heard the myth about dreams only lasting a couple of seconds in reality. Turns out that yes, some of them do, but not all dreams are the same. There are a lot of things we don't understand yet about how we dream. What we do know is that they mainly happen during the rapid eye movement or REM stage of sleep. During this time, your brain is more active, about as active as it is when you're awake. And it's named REM because during the sleep stage, your eyes tend to move a lot. Dreams can happen during the other stages of sleep too, but you're less likely to remember them. As for the length of each dream, they can go from a few seconds to even 20 to 30 minutes. Also, you're more likely to remember a dream if you've woken during the REM stage. Most people have 3 to 5 dreams per night, but some people can have up to 7. I know, seems unlikely, but remember, you immediately forget most of what you dream. Just like we have unique fingerprints, we also develop unique tongue prints. Research has shown that those approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues are laid out in a one-of-a-kind pattern. Truth is, about 80% of what you believe is taste is actually smell. That combination of taste and smell that we perceive is what we come to know as flavor. 
That's probably because our sense of smell is around 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. Our mouths have also another cool superpower called mouthfeel. With the help of the somatosensory system, it allows us to sense the texture of our food. The system is activated by physical touches, such as pressure, touch, or vibrations. It's even sensitive to pain and temperature. We also use our tongues to identify the size, form, and texture of food, which is crucial for proper chewing and digestion. A. Tongues are also good for wagging, sticking out at certain people, and trumpet playing. Now, I've tried this one myself, too. Pinch your elbow as hard as you can. You barely feel pain. How come? Well, different areas of your skin have different nerve endings. Our bodies are designed to be more sensitive to pain in places that are at higher risk of getting damaged. Those important parts have more nerve endings so that we're more alert and able to protect ourselves. And thick skin, like that on elbows, has fewer pain detectors. Now, I'm not talking about the tingling, jolting pain you can feel when you hit your elbow against something. Oh, that feels almost like your entire arm has been electrocuted. It's not a feeling I would consider funny, but it comes from the funny bone. Now, the funny bone isn't actually a bone. It's a nerve that starts in your spine, goes through your neck, through your elbow, and through your fingers. Its real name is the ulnar nerve. It's one of the three primary nerves in your arm, and it provides sensation to the fingertips. Your ulnar nerve is well protected by muscle, fat, and bone. But there's one spot at your elbow where this nerve is exposed, and that spot is, yeah, the funny bone. A different but real version of Achilles' story, huh? Okay, so now you know why it hits so different when you bump your funny bone, and why you feel nothing when you pinch your elbow. Now, the next phenomenon is related to socially awkward moments. Okay, maybe not entirely. It might happen when your crush gives you a compliment. I'm talking about blushing. Now, I'm not sure those butterflies in your stomach exist when you're in love. But I'm sure of this. When you blush, your stomach lining also turns red. Yeah, I've looked. The stomach lining is the tissue that protects your stomach walls from the acid inside. When you blush, it also turns red because blushing happens when the blood rises to the surface of the skin. This affects the stomach, too. Now, this is a natural process, a physiological response to the change in your emotions. Now, since we're talking about the stomach, it might be a good time to mention that the stomach fluid has the ability to melt a steel table. Yep. This means the acid would be able to digest your internal organs. Luckily, the stomach lining prevents this from happening. Number three is about letting you know that you can glow in the dark. Now, don't turn off the lights just yet. You can't see it with the unaided eye. These visuals of glittering human bodies come from ultra-sensitive cameras. Japanese scientists were the first to capture the images of human bioluminescence. Only ultra-sensitive cameras can reveal that our bodies emit tiny amounts of light, because this light is a thousand times weaker than the human eye can detect. Apparently, all living creatures produce a small amount of light thanks to the chemical reactions in their cells. Humans are newly added to this list. The researchers had been photographing the upper bodies of the volunteers for several days. The results showed that the amount of emitted light followed a 24-hour cycle. The glow is at its highest in late afternoon and lowest late at night. Plus, the brightest light is emitted from the cheeks, forehead, and neck. Interestingly, this does not correspond with the brightest areas caught by thermal cameras. Did you know you're a little bit taller in the morning than you are later at night? Yes, I've been measuring you. <laughs> Seriously. This height difference is related to gravity. Its force compresses the cartilage in your spine and knees when you stand up or sit down throughout the day. But when you're lying down, your spine decompresses and relaxes. That's why when you wake up in the morning after resting in bed all night, you're taller. The increase in height is not even above an inch, so don't bet on who is taller after hearing this information. Fun fact, astronauts returning from a mission are a few inches taller than they usually are on Earth. It's because of the lack of gravity on the International Space Station. They don't remain that tall forever, though. When they're on the Earth again, gravity gradually squeezes them back down to their usual height. 
Now, let's get back to the organ we've already spoken about, the skin. Yes, the skin is an organ. In fact, it's the largest organ in your body. It contributes to about 15% of your body weight. What else does this organ do besides covering your body? It performs vital functions. For instance, it protects your body from external physical and biological harm. Plus, it prevents excessive water loss. Now, I can't help wondering what other surprises the human body has in store for us. But right now, let's move on to the animal planet. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have something called eye tubes. Their rod-shaped eyes do not move in their sockets as our eyeballs do. That's why owls would have to move their entire bodies to look around. But moving their torsos would make some noise, and other animals would hear it. So owls have evolved to have necks that can twist to around 270 degrees, and they move super silently. But why the concern? Well, night vision requires large corneas to get as much light as possible. This is the main reason why most nocturnal animals, such as the slow loris or tarsier, have big eyes. For owls, it works a little differently. Since they have small heads, such large eyes wouldn't be able to fit inside. Now, even though these creatures don't have eyeballs, they have three sets of eyelids. One set is for blinking, one is for sleeping, and the last one is for keeping their eye tubes clean. So, do the owls give a hoot about that? Yes, yes they do. Moving on from nocturnal animals to the ones you're more familiar with. Meow. Cats have an extra organ that allows them to taste scents in the air. This organ is called Jacobson's organ, or the vomeral nasal organ. Jacobson's organ is located inside the cat's nasal cavity and opens into the roof of the mouth. This organ can detect specific chemicals by using nerves that lead directly to the brain. That's not a regular sniffing, though. The odor receptors of Jacobson's organ aren't designed to catch ordinary smells. They detect chemicals that have no odor at all. In other words, cats can detect undetectable smells. It's not just this. Jacobson's organ increases the sense of smell. For instance, when kittens need to find their mother's milk, imagine there are two mother cats and four kittens. Kittens can distinguish their mother from the other grown-up cat with the help of their sense of smell. Now, when two people meet, they assess each other's body language. Cats can usually do this by sniffing each other's heads. This greeting releases pheromones that can tell a lot about one cat to the other like what the other feline likes to eat, or if they are healthy or not. They can even evaluate whether the other cat is happy or moody, all thanks to Jacobson's organ. Now, another fact about cats. Their nose has distinct ridges that look like a pattern. Similar to our fingerprints, every cat has a unique nose print. It can be used as a form of identification. Okay, cat, we can nail you for breaking the vase. We have your nose prints all over it. Now, do you want to cut a deal? Just tell us what you know about the dog and that chewed-up DVD. Dog lovers? No, I didn't forget about you. Here's a myth you've probably heard. Dogs are colorblind. But they aren't. However, it is true that the color range they can detect is limited compared to the spectrum humans can see. Their color palette consists mostly of yellows, blues, and violets. Our reds, greens, and oranges are not noticeable to them. Now this one is about turtles. These animals cannot leave their shells and get back whenever they want. In fact, they are completely attached to their shells. These shells grow with turtles, similar to the human skin. A turtle's shell consists of 50 bones. It also includes a skeleton with the spine and rib cage. So they go on vacation with it. It's kind of like an RV that you can't get rid of.